Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we're celebrating my new iPad with some music apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from Tech Edge. And today, I'd like to first celebrate. I got a new iPad. This is an iPad Air 2. I'm really excited about getting it. Um, and it's working better than any iPad I've had before, so um, I'm ecstatic. It was a major upgrade. And today, I'd like to talk about some of the apps that I've discovered uh, that help play music. And I'm thinking about music just like I think about uh, almost all other educational apps. We have apps that are more about consumptions and apps that are more about uh, creating and making. And I'm going to start with the consumption. There are lots of music apps out there. There's Beats, there's uh, Pandora, there's um, iTunes Radio. There's lots of options. And a lot of teachers use those options and they're fantastic. Uh, one of the problems that you have as you use them is that many of them, if you do not have a subscription, have ads and the ads may or may not be appropriate for kids. So you have to think very carefully about how you want to use this. So one option is if you're on a service like Pandora, considering getting the full service and then there are no ads and you're not worried about this. You still have to choose channels that would have only appropriate music, but that is very possible, especially with experimentation. Don't expect necessarily that it'll immediately be uh, appropriate for kids because in Pandora at least they choose the next track for us based on our selection. So if your selection changes in any way or they bring up a song that's not appropriate, you will have to act rather swiftly. Another way to do this is an app called Songza, and this is an app that uh, uh, one of the teachers we work with, Michelle, uh, just uh, told me about. And in Songza, you choose music, and you choose based on what you're doing, cleaning the house, enjoying the morning, brand new music, uh, having fun at work, or anything else, or even the holidays. And I chose something specific that I was interested in. Now, this one will be without the ads, which allows you to enjoy music with a very clear selection without necessarily having to worry about this. So let's think about keeping a common mellow. And here are some uh, different takes on this. And I'm thinking about relaxing jazz because my students are writing and I don't want them to pay attention to words. So this can be uh, something like that. Uh, let's take mellow jazz and then it comes up and again you can say how much you like something by thumbs up thumbs down and then you can jump to the next tune. So it's a way to get music into your classroom for the time you, you want kids to work or even when they're working with the group and talking with each other or if they're working individually and you just want to make sure that it keeps the classroom calm, you can choose music like this if you want kids working out or playing some game or something that has more, uh, more of a pace to it, you can actually use the music to set some of that pace. So different ways to use music, Songza is a great way to access all of that and uh, not be worried about what kind of ads are popping up or what kind of music because it is narrowly defined. The, uh, the quintessential app for creating music on the iPad will, I think, forever be GarageBand. In GarageBand, and there's a version for the Mac and there's a version for the iPad, the version for the iPad is, uh, I think, exceptionally good. Um, this is an example, but you can choose the instrument you're playing, you can do audio, you can do uh, these are the songs that are uh, available in there. So this can sample existing sound. In this case, it's sampling my sound. And now you can uh, play it or you can get different instruments. So I can get a different instrument, say a, a keyboard. And then you can play. You can turn on the sustain or turn off the sustain so you can... And of course you can get some autoplay. So there are different ways to interact with this app 
and to be as creative as you can be. I think that this app is very good at bridging the capacity of the individual just to find the right keys or to think about music and the, the need to be creative early on. So in usual, usually when you learn an instrument, you're learning the instrument and as you get te the technical facility with it, you also learn to play more music and to create, but creation comes much later. These kind of devices allow us to bridge that at least a little bit. You still need to know a lot about the sounds that a, a, an instrument makes, whether it's digital or not, but what you can do is you can bring in the creation in multiple ways, whether it's through the touch interface or through writing notes or through songs that are pre-programmed or through sampling, you can bring it in and create and put pieces together from multiple instruments. So um, this, the GarageBand has been around for quite a while. I think it's uh, fantastic and uh, Apple has been able to maintain uh, the quality of GarageBand and even improve it through the different iteration. And right now, if you buy a new iPad, and I have, you get that free as part of the iPad. So that's another uh, reason to use that. Another app that is a really interesting app is called Oxy. And in this app, let me just stop this. Uh, stop. So in this app, you can set different percussion instruments to work individually or in a unison. So you can activate or deactivate multiple boxes where you can set the beat, you can set the kit that it uses. So you have different drum kits, you have bass, you have synthesizer and uh, two synthesizers. So you can have selected different things and then you can turn it on. Now, you can see that you have controls for each one of the uh, blocks and you can make it louder or softer, you can make it faster or slower, so you can control a lot of the aspects. So you can start with a very simple creation. So if I start with a, with a new piece of music, Let's call it just now, okay? You can see that my board is completely all empty. Now I can add a piece and there's nothing going on because I haven't added anything. And you can select if you want one bar, two bars, or four bars. Let's make it two bars. And now you can add, and you can see that you're starting to get the sound. So now you're getting more complex sounds. And you can see that you can play with this and just add things. Now that stays there. And that's just the first bar. I can program the second bar. And now I can overlay another instrument right here that will use the same kit as a second drum. And now I can add a bass. So now all of that is playing together. So when you're creating music like that, and I'm not a musician, what you can see is it's very easy to help kids start creating, thinking about bars, thinking about rate, thinking about how, what sounds work together, what sounds don't work together, and creating very simple creations, and then increasing, because this can become, as you can see from the number of boxes we have, this can become incredibly complex as well. And again, this is a place where you can integrate music, but you can also integrate math, and you can really work on the different aspects that define music. So this one, is called Oxy. And the last one I want to talk about is Drummer. And, uh, and the Kizi uh, Drummer allows you to create a very simple drumming procedure. You choose what kind of drum it is. Let's do the snare. And then we can create a rhythm and then we're playing it. 
And if you press on something, then it shows up with that. And again, we can change it. And you can see the rhythm going on the bottom. And now, one of the other things that you can do in this is, besides, of course, trying it in different ways, is you can add new ones. And when you click on the little diamond shape, you can increase or decrease the rate that uh, the drumming is going on. So if I will increase the rate, let's say to 70, you can see that it's going much faster. So kids can play with the frequency, they can play with the sounds that it makes, and they can keep a recording, or not a recording of it, but they can play it so it is part of their repertoire and then they can add new ones. So if you go to the main uh, page, you can see that you can add new creations all the time. So you don't have to, to erase your old one as you're creating with new ones. And this is Kizzy Drummer. It's a great quick way to, ki to teach kids about percussion, about uh, really working on rhythm. And so today we talked about different apps to listen to music on the iPad, Trans works for transitions, works for when kids are working quietly or even working in groups just to uh, keep the ambience controlled and let kids still have enough time to think. But it also allows kids to create new music on the iPad. They can do things that are very limited and very controlled or they can go crazy and incorporate multiple instruments in interesting ways and be very, very creative with it. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the classroom. <laughs>